Hi everybody, so in video 1867 we talked about this idea of the generator speed on the rim instead of acting on the axle and torque at the hub. And of course when you do something like that the very next thing you've got to do really is put your money where your mouth is and build something. So according to those principles what I've done is I've made this Savonia style generator. Now I've made the Savonia because it's simply the simplest style. It's really easy to make and it's really easy to compare with other Savonius types that people have been making. Now I've printed it but I've also made this from discs of plastic and rainwater gutter so you can make it by hand but I've done a 3D print of it and in the bottom I've got all these little indents to take my magnets and these are the magnets I'm going to use. They're one centimetre across and two millimetres deep and they're N35 near Dimian magnets. And I've printed a top and a bottom and the bottom is to take a serpentine coil. Now I've done this in three parts because, um, well, simplicity is always the key for things. People like to think that it's complexity and they like to think it's efficiency and it isn't. If you get super, super efficient, but it's very complex to build, actually it'll just never get made. The best thing you can do if you want something to be actually made is to make it as simple and easy as possible. So you've got 300 grams of plastic here in three parts. It could be injection molded for pennies. Now, of course, I printed this from PLA, so the plastic cost to me was £5.40. But at two pounds a kilo, you're looking at something like 60 pence to make something like this. So all of that stuff really matters when you're thinking about what it is that you're going to design. Don't design something that's so stupidly complex and expensive to make that all that will happen is it'll sit in your design folder. And you find this a lot with people. They do stuff that never gets made apart from their imagination because you've got to pair it back. You've got to think about how is it going to be made? What's the simplest number of parts to get an acceptable efficiency? And of course that is in this. It's, it's part of what we've done when we've designed this. So this is one part, a few holes in the bottom to glue the magnets in. This is the actual generator section. We'll be banging a coil in there. And that's the top. And the reason I did a top separately, I could have printed it all in one, was because if I didn't do that, I would have had to put supports in. And of course, all those supports are wasted plastic. So doing it in three parts means I waste less plastic, print it really easily, make it really quickly, and make it really cheaply. Okay, that's the design lessons out of the way. Now what we've got to do, obviously, is put some magnets in here and wind a coil and stick it in there. And there's our coil wound. So I've glued the top on, put the magnets in the bottom, and you'll notice there's a bearing in there. That bearing is because this has to have something to stop it zipping off the top. So we've got our bearing in there, and what we've got here is the base plate. It's got a steel rod in it, which that'll, that'll sit on, that helps guide it. And at the back, we've put our coil. Now you'll note our coil is a serpentine coil, because serpentine coils are uh, surprisingly good in their performance. We went through in video 1859 exactly how to make them. They're fast to make. I made that coil in about 15 minutes or so and we've got 36 little coils. Imagine trying to do each one of those as little coils and then place them. So it gets the result very very quickly and actually does a really good job and check out that video if you're not sure about that. Now if we put that on top of that, there we go. There is our generator and wind turbine complete. The build of this after I printed it was probably about half an hour or so, something like that. Cost about £5.40 in the plastic, about £3.60 in the uh, magnets, and everything else, the wire was 35p. <laughs> you know, it's, the whole thing's been put together for about £9 or so, and that's a prototype. To build this as an industrial thing, you're probably talking about, I don't know, 
two, three pounds, something like that. So we've got ourselves a little mini generator for two or three pounds. And of course, the big question is, what do you do with it then? Well, I've actually made two. So I guess we could use them as a charming set of earrings if we wanted to. Or we could maybe stack them together and then we could make ourselves a wind wall. So there's lots of ways of looking at this. This remembers a prototype so we can demonstrate it. And the whole issue here is keep it cheap, keep it simple, keep it effectively efficient, not super efficient. There's nothing wrong with looking at stuff super efficient. I mean, if you want to play with yourself mentally all day long, go for it, because there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to actually make something, then you need to make it as simple and easy to make as you possibly can, so that the performance is acceptable. And <laughs> this actually is awesome. Let me connect it to an LED, which I've got here, and I'm going to blow it around first. <laughs> okay, you're going to have a challenge to get a wind turbine to work by blowing on it. <laughs> okay, I thought that was really cool. A wind turbine that works when you breathe on it. So I thought I'd do an extra little bit with this one because, um, well, that was quite impressive. So there's our wind turbine sitting here, and I've got it on this BK Precision load. So this actually has a, a set resistive load, and it will measure the volts and amps as the turbine works against that load. And I've got it going through a rectifier right there. It's a bridge rectifier, as this takes DC voltage. We've got a fan, and we've got a little anemometer to read the wind speed. So let's turn that on and see what we actually get out of it. So I'm reading a couple of volts, 12 to 14 milliamps, and the wind speed. One point seven meters per second. That's absolutely awesome. Okay, so for me that was, um, well, not the ball out of the park success stuff, showing that this generation by speed at the rim really works and against a load and gives a really good result. And of course, the design principles of keep it simple are really what you need to head for if you want something that's going to be produced just because of the price of everything. Now, that probably, I don't know, three, four quid in total to produce a whole unit if it was done. Nine quid for the prototype. That's pretty good going when you think about prototyping costs. Now, I thought I would share that with you as an example of what can be done with this speed at the rim idea. Though we put a Savonius on top, of course, anything can go on top of that generator section that we just did, and we can use it in a whole myriad of ways. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope the example of what I was talking about with um, speed at the rim as opposed to talk at the hub makes sense. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.